That beat is hard. <laughs> One and all of the show, we're wired up, fired up, fucking ready to go. In the back of the parking lot outside of the bar, 20 deep, 20 feet from the boulevard. Black hoodies, black caps, black labeling glasses. Previewing the new shit before all the masses. Cause the first thing I need when I got a new beat is to see how it sounds echoing up the street. I just take it for a spin. Pop the CD in, slide it up to 10 and get that rear view shaking then play it again so there's no mistake in San Andreas the block get this bitch earthquake like oh. All right, so this is part one of um, The e-pads conversion electronic power steering um, the first thing you got to do is uh, convert your hydraulic power steering to manual which requires uh, removing the steering rack and pinion and cutting out the seal that's inside the rack itself. So to do that, <clears throat> you have to um, take all the hydraulic pieces off. Already took the uh, reservoir off. It's pretty easy. It's just a, a clamp here. This is the tube, the uh, suction line. So you gotta take it off there. This is your high pressure. So we gotta take that off too, but these are uh, hard lines. And um, that has brackets and stuff. So but that's gonna come off. You see here, it makes a little bit of mess. We're going to be taking this bracket off. So you got 12 mil millimeter bolts. Those look like 14s or 15s. Oh, there's two on this side right there. All right, so once you get that uh, the bracket off for the racket pinion, this is what it looks like. You have uh, this is one of the braces here. Cusco makes a thicker one. Taking that off, there's also a mount here. We're gonna be changing that bushing. Um, you can see all these hydraulic lines. Uh, you don't really have to mess with all these lines just yet. <clears throat> you can see. Uh, let's see. Here's the input, steering input side. And if you go follow up, there's your uh, joint for your steering column where it comes through the firewall. We're going to take that bolt off right there. The only lines are. Nuts you can take off for the lines are uh, over here on the passenger side. But to drop the rack, you just have to take off this nut here, and then there's also one right there. So I'm gonna do that now, and then we're gonna drop the rack, and we're gonna start taking it apart. All right, so the steering rack is out. <clears throat> this is kind of a <sighs> ant on me. This is kind of a bitch uh, to get out just because the the subframe um, this shaft here kind of sticks through the subframe through like a little hole and it's pretty tight in there so now we're going to disassemble the rack um, so obviously we got to take off all these lines see all, <clears throat> they're all connected there uh, these all gotta come off and we're gonna put the new white line bushings in here uh, some of you may be wondering whenever you because uh, you can see here lights in the way the alternators run off the same belt as a power steering so yes we are gonna have to have a new belt um, I don't know the size of this belt yet I'm gonna have to measure it and then when when I measure it and I find out what belt we're gonna need um, I'm gonna get a Gates belt and then I'll have this part number for this belt uh, in the description just to help you guys out so all right so took off all the lines uh, degreased it cleaned it up a little bit 
Um, so I'm ready to to take these uh, boots off, but I fucked up and I had made a mark on here <clears throat> to line up like where the uh, the union attached to there, so that that would give me the proper length of each side when I go to bolt it back up. Uh, but when I cleaned it, yeah, that mark came off. So I didn't touch these marks; they're still there. But yeah, so that's gonna be fun. I should have measured from this outside tie rod end to to the uh, clamp on each side. I should have done that, and I wouldn't. I didn't want it to matter. And so, if you're doing this, make sure you, me you measure that. Just a rough estimate. So it'll save you work, extra work. No. <clears throat> All right. So using the screwdriver, I popped off um, these uh, boot clamps that go on the um, steering rack on the tie rods. Um, pretty sure I can still use these. You know, kind of mess with them. It's, that's a little tip. Just if you don't have the right tool. Just use a little screwdriver. <clears throat> um, I have the boots down. This is what it looks like. Uh, this is the. <clears throat> this would be the passenger side. This is the side that has the nut that we're gonna take off, and then this is the other side, the driver side that. Uh, basically, what what you have to do on this side is, see here how it's got a little notch for. Um, a wrench I use crescent wrenches so basically <clears throat> here on the body of the steering rack you're gonna use your biggest wrench you got just hold it with this unscrew from there and then this is just a, a ball and socket joint so that rod will come off and then once you get that off then you're gonna loosen uh, this side by holding holding there loosen this nut <laughs> this nuts probably threaded in about to here and they, they stake that so when you pull this off it's gonna mess up the threads on that nut um, that's this just the way it is there's no way to get around that this tube right here is where all the work is done there's a piston seal inside here that's why you have it in and, a, and out so you pressurize one that's how you get the power steering so <clears throat> our whole goal is to take this inner shaft out and then cut that piston seal off and then we're gonna put it back in, put this nut back on. All right, so I got that side off. This is what it looks like. Just threads in there. Uh, this is counterclockwise to remove it. So. Nothing special. This came off pretty good. Um, the threads actually didn't get damaged, so. That's really good. And uh, I didn't have a big enough crescent wrench, so I used a vise. That's the other way to do it. So now, <coughs> turn this. And you should see the piston come out here pretty soon. Or not. What's the deal here? Might have to pull this out. Well, I'm finally finished um, making this a manual rack now. Uh, there's a piston seal inside of here. However, um, you can't just <clears throat> take it out and then cut it out like like other ones that I've used that I've converted let's see if I can get a good shot of it all right kind of see in there there's like a groove for a seal I'm spinning it right now I took the seal out basically what I had to do was take a punch 
and I lined up the uh, where the seal was, and I just hit it. I made an indention until I broke through the broke through the seal, kind of like it's like a seal like that. Um, and it takes a long time, but eventually you just turn it, punch it, turn it, punch it, and you'll get little bits and pieces out. Um, it's kind of all over the floor. But, um, but yeah, so now, as you can see, it uh, it just falls by itself. So it's a manual rack now, and uh, all it's left to do is to um, cut all the fittings off and put them in. There's not going to be any liquid in here. It's just going to be the grease. So <laughs> got some white lithium grease I'm going to stick in here. But uh, when it's done, it should do that by itself. So. All right, I'm gonna show you like how to uh, put this all back. I just installed the white line bushings. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can read the directions. You can figure that out. Um, this is the I guess, sha input shaft. Let's see. <clears throat> in order to to uh, to take to move to twist this shaft at all, you, you have to take this out because it this is what a bind nut is on there. It's got some O rings in it. Um, what you do is you use a punch and you stick it in there at an angle and then hammer it and it'll slowly loosen. Uh, <clears throat> so, anyways. Whenever you're gonna put this back in, uh, white lithium grease on on the uh, bearing surface up here on the top where my pinky is, and there's another bearing surface, and then the gears themselves. And this will just slide right in, and it'll engage on the gears. See, <coughs> engaged on the shaft. So. <coughs> That's pretty much that and then the other part there is the uh, preload spring this is a, a greased up spring right here and this goes inside here and it acts on this little piston you can see so what you want to do is have it this way. Slide the piston in. There you go. Wipe my fingers. Okay. And now the spring. You can see the spring has just got grease. Fits over. Uh, there's a little indention for it. Fits in there. Then you got your adjuster. <laughs> with the lock nut on the outside I just spun the whole thing off with the gun there we go <clears throat> ideally you want to mark uh, make a line like before you take it off so you can set it back because what this does is it uh, it's almost like adjusting the backlash on the gears and it's uh, it's gonna adjust your initial turn in this goes over the shaft and like that and then we install our nut and I got my hot glue gun going because <clears throat> all these lines here I cut off the ends so hot glue gun put some um, hot glue in there to basically seal it up and then you thread it on it's basically a plug we get all that done um, get these tight tie, tie rod ends back on this one over there and then I'll show you the finished product <clears throat> 